Welcome everybody to Kingdom Talks. I've got the praying medic Dave Hayes with me and we're going to get into some interesting conversation right after this. Welcome to Kingdom Talks. We engage with leaders, teachers, creative artists, and everyday people in conversations to awaken listeners to new revelations of the Kingdom Age. All of our courses, community conversations, partnership links, and much more can be found on our website, KingdomTalksMedia.com. You can help us get the word out by liking, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. Now, enjoy the conversation. All right, so I've got Dave Hayes on here with me. And Dave, uh, I, I'm so appreciative of you coming on here. Honor you and bless you for the, the path that you've been on. Um, I, I know you've had a, a couple of different um, things going on in the last few years because you were doing the uh, QAnon. I don't know if you want to say anything about that, but I just uh, probably saw more of you on that. And, and especially my wife watched you pretty consistently in that. But I also know that you've got a couple books that you would like to talk about that are coming up. So I'm going to let you take it. But actually, before you do that, there's some viewers that may not, from my, my side of uh, things, may not know who you are. So you want to give a little bit of background first of who you are and how you got to where you're at? Sure. And I'll talk about any subject you want to talk about. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> um, so I'm a former atheist. Um, I was... I, I was raised uh, in the Catholic Church, but by the time I was 12 or 13 years old, I didn't have any interest in the church, didn't have any interest in religion. Um, the, the more I went through school, high school and college, um, I really gravitated toward uh, science and uh, biology. And eventually, and I ran into a bunch of professors who were, who were atheists, and I, I just became a convinced Darwinist. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't just, you know, your average run of the mill, you know, guy who didn't believe in God. I, I was a very outspoken. Uh, I, I was I was a Darwinist. I, I believed in natural evolution. I believe in scientific naturalism and I preached it. And at the tender age of 38 years old, <laughs> uh, I had a meeting with God and life has not been the same since then. So. Uh, in 2008, I had a dramatic experience where I met the Lord in a dream. And he told me, and I was working as a paramedic at the time. I, I worked for a paramedic for 35 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. In this, this is the first dream I had as an adult. Uh, and I was 46 years old when it happened. Um, so in this dream, I met God and he was speaking to me. And, he, and there's a lot of things that happened there, but I'll just make it real short. Um, he told me, uh, I want you to pray with your patients. Um, and when you do, I'll heal them. And I did not believe in healing and miracles at the time. Hmm. Um, you know, even though I was a Christian, this was in 2008. Um, I had set under teaching that denied miracles, healing, anything of that, like, of that nature. So God telling me that he wanted me to pray for my patients to be healed was a bit of a stretch for me. I mean, you know, and it took me probably six months to a year reading some books, watching some videos on YouTube. I had to learn about um, healing and learn about power and authority. And, you know, I probably read Luke chapter nine a hundred times <laughs> and never actually <laughs> understood what Luke chapter nine verse one actually means where it says Jesus called the disciples to him and he gave them power and authority over sickness and, and to heal diseases. And I was like, wait a yeah, minute, yeah. wait a minute. What do you mean he gave them power and authority? So uh, that set me off on, on an exploration for about five years, where I was learning how to release power and how to exercise authority. Um, and that's the subject of an upcoming book. I'll be releasing a book here uh, in a couple of months. Uh, this book is probably three quarters of the way done, um, but it's a book on power and authority. It's Kingdom Power and Authority, How to Release Power and How to Exercise Authority. Uh, it's a book that John Paul Jackson probably would have written had he had time to get around to it, but you know, he went to be with the Lord a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. And John Paul Jackson's ministry, um, not only of dreams, 
but of uh, he had a very good understanding of power and authority. I've listened to his videos and I've and the Lord has shown me a lot through my own dreams about how to release uh, power for healing and how to exercise authority for deliverance and, and authority is a very big subject actually. So I have a book coming out on that and you know that that was that's been my life up until 2017. Uh, when Q came along and mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. my, my <laughs> wife got introduced, she was following Q. She was following some people on social media, YouTube who are doing Q decodes. And I was ignoring it. Didn't interest me. Uh, I've never been a conspiracy theorist. I'm not a truther. I don't consider myself to be one. And this, the whole thing just seemed kind of foolish to me. Um, and then I had a dream. <laughs> 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 Lord gave me a dream uh, in December of 2017, where he very clearly let me know that I needed to pay attention to this Q thing. And I was like, oh, great. What am I getting myself into now? <laughs> so I started reading the posts and listening to some other people who were doing decodes. And I, I learned, I learned pretty quickly, could understand uh, the, the basic purpose of Q's mission which was the exposure of institutional corruption in government, in, uh, in corporate America, in academia. Q was just dropping all this information that exposed uh, institutional corruption. And I thought, okay, well, this is, this is actually kind of relevant information. So that's why um, I began doing the, my decode videos. I started doing those in January of 2018. It took me about a month to get caught up to where Q was at. Started doing decodes in January 2018, and I've done over 220 uh, videos where I decode cues. I was going to ask how many. Wow. Yeah, over okay. 200 of them. Hmm. Um, and I learned a lot. Oh my gosh, I have my mind I has just been uh, expanded. Um, but I'm a different person today because of what I've learned, because of what I've uncovered. Because I just do a lot of research. Uh, a lot of my, you know, it's what cues tells us to do. Think for yourself, yeah. uh, do your own research, come to your own conclusions. And, and I've taken that very seriously. So, uh, you know, Q is taking a break right now, but I, I have a feeling Q will be back at some point in the future. Uh, and I right, and, and in the meantime, in the four months that Q has not been posting, I've been working on these books. Books, yeah. <laughs> and I'm finishing up the book, a book on dream interpretation. That is another book that's been on the back burner for a long time. Uh, started writing about dreams and, and kind of an outline for a dream interpretation book back in 2011. So yeah, it's been 10 years uh, since that book has been wow. sitting there. Yeah. So Gil, if you feel bad about, <laughs> about not taking your <laughs> book project seriously, that's okay. Yeah. You know, let it, let it marinate and, and, and God will give you the, the timing for when, when it's the right time to bring it out. And for me right now, uh, I have a, a lot of, uh, energy and a lot of revelation. God's been giving me a lot of specific revelation that he wants me to include in this dream interpretation book that will be coming out hopefully in a couple of months. Um, I have the text for the book done. I'm working on a dream dictionary that goes in, in the back. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, it'll have, right now it has about 700 uh, terms with definitions and scripture references. So that'll be coming out at some point. Uh, it's, it's been, it's a labor of love going, creating this dream dictionary is a lot of work. Um, now I've, I've been to your website. You've got a lot of books on there. How many do you have that you've written so far? Uh, I've published 15 books. 15. So now are these 13? There's, there's 12 books that are, are nonfiction books. that are just on kingdom <clears throat> teaching. So emotional healing, physical healing, deliverance, uh, things of that nature, hearing God's voice. And then uh, one novel, which is um, The Gates of Shiloh, which I published in 2019. And then there's two Q books. The third Q book is finished, but I'm not going to release it yet because okay. I, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for a couple of things to come to pass as confirmation. And then I'm going to release the third okay. Q book, but I'm just waiting a little bit on that. So... so uh Go ahead. 13 books uh, or 15 altogether? 15 books so far, two more, three more in the hopper, actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, then, I have uh, no are, shortage. Plus, I'm working on a science fiction trilogy. 
Um, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because my wife and I, we, we, we went for a walk this afternoon and we were both talking about um, uh, putting together like a, a, a fiction book, but based around, you know, some truth of things that we believe that are coming and just to kind of put out there the possibilities, but put it into a fiction form so it doesn't yeah. freak people out so badly. <laughs> That's what my science fiction trilogy is about. It is, it is essentially about um, what I believe is going to happen <clears throat> mm -hmm. over the next couple mm -hmm. of years. But people, some people have a difficult time receiving prophetic revelation when it comes at them straightforward as prophecy. Right. But if you weave that into a story, a fictional story, it's easier for them to receive it and believe it. And that's the basic premise behind the science fiction trilogy that I'm writing. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're now, thinking of doing available? that, I, I would encourage you to do that. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited about doing that. I'm trying to get through this first book first that uh, we were talking about before we start recording. <laughs> and it's been... Uh, painful for me, but you gave me a lot of encouragement. So I'm, I'm um, hopeful in that. Your books though, uh, where can people get them? Uh, I know your website, Praying Medic. Is it the Praying Medic or prayingmedic.com? It's, yeah, it's just prayingmedic.com. Okay. So if you go to prayingmedic.com, uh, you had to ask me <laughs> to find out today which, which the link is for the bookstore. So if you go to the front page and you go to the bookstore um, section of the front page, that'll take you to my books. Um, all of my books are available on Amazon, except the Q okay. books. The Q books have been blacklisted by Amazon. Of course. Uh, over the target. <laughs> uh, those books are available through Barnes and Noble, and they're also available through Ingram Spark. And okay. I have, um, you can go to, if you're a wholesaler, you can buy them through Ingram Spark and sell them. If you just want it for retail, Barnes and Noble is probably the easiest place to get those books, the Q books. But all all my other books are available primarily through Amazon. And I know a lot of people are are hating on Amazon right now, and they don't want to buy buy things through Amazon. I have a love hate relationship because yes. you know most of my income comes through Amazon because I, I'm 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 a self published author, and uh, most of most of our retail sales go through Amazon. But when well, you know, decided to blacklist our two most popular books, uh, you know, that gave tough. me a little bit of heartburn for Amazon. <laughs> so Yes. Um, well, yeah. you know, I, I don't know if this helps any at all, but I just interviewed somebody yesterday who uh, wrote a book called I Came to Give, and it's on economics. And he points out in there that, you know, the enemy's been for the last 3,000 years trying to usurp the economy and take it over, which he's done a fairly good job of that. And and yet Jesus, when he came, he used coins that had pictures imprinted on them of other gods. So he still used them because he had to in the time. So it's like right. uh, I Amazon's got a lot of the stuff I need. And I agree. There's there's some things, some reasons to um, to avoid avoid it. But at the same time, I don't think we need to get too religious about it. Um, but yeah. I, I am agreement. We need to build the kingdom. Yeah, it, it's and it's not it's not for me. It's not an issue of um, it, it. Kind of is an issue of you know where, what, what's your red line? Where yeah. where, where are you going to decide? I'm not going to buy anything from Amazon anymore. Well, you can do that if you want to. Right. You're just making. Uh, life a little bit more inconvenient for yourself. And, and that's fine. I get it. Yeah. My problem is as, <clears throat> as a self-published author, um, the, the number of retail outlets available to me for, for selling books, for getting my message out is very limited. I could, I could draw a red line and I could take a hard stand and say, I'm going to print my own books and I'm going to hire my own people to do the shipping and do the order fulfillment and, and the payment processing. That, that's, that is a large undertaking to do, the, do that yourself. I could do that, um, but that takes a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of manpower to do that. And I, I, for me, it's, it's uh, more efficient for me to let somebody else do the order fulfillment and the shipping. Uh, yeah. and, and like you said, it's, it's kind of about using the, the, this, the world's systems to your advantage. For, for God's, yeah. uh, to get God's message out. And God yeah. has a message he wants all of us to get out. A lot of us don't like Facebook, don't like Twitter, 
don't like YouTube, that people are putting <laughs> out messages on those platforms and they're changing people's lives for the better. Right. Uh, you, you Sometimes you have to use the tools of the enemy. I, I prefer not to use the tools of my oppressors. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you have to do that uh, to get the message out. So I agree. And, and the thing is, you know, we, 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 um, you know, our ministry, we stopped doing doctrines, period. We have three plumb lines. They're pretty simple. It's just first one is Yeshua is the only way. Jesus is the only way. Second one is love, honor, and respect. And third one is ask the Father. And But that second one is the one where people get hung up. But my point with it is love, honor, and respect is that we would just let people subjectively, because we all do it. It's all subjective and how we draw that line as to what we'll use and what we can't use. And that Number one, that especially as Christians, we need to stop judging one another. And uh, if people want to do some things that seem to cross the line for me, um, I'm going to honor, love, and, you know, just continue to respect them and even their decisions. But it doesn't mean I have to agree with it, you know. Right. And that's giving each each person the freedom to act and do as they, um, they feel Yeah, necessary. well, the funny thing is when I started publishing books, um, the Holy Spirit was giving me specific strategies in dreams about how to market those books on Amazon. How to, wow. he, he was giving me ad, he was basically giving me ad copy. He was giving me all these insights on marketing promotion for my books on social media and on Amazon. So it's like, so. It, it's not like I'm doing this completely devoid of what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. <laughs> I, I, I try as right. much as possible to be led by the Spirit. I mean, the, the Lord showed me two years ago that my YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook uh, pages would be all be taken down, right? Well, wow. uh, he yeah. also showed me before I published any of the Q books that they would be eventually be blacklisted from Amazon. So I published the books on Amazon knowing they were going to be blacklisted, <laughs> and boom, in January they got blacklisted. Um, wow. You know, it, it's everything that you, we should do is should be led by the Holy Spirit. Everything, absolutely. You know, and uh, it, it's kind of funny. I, I, I share this story. Uh, carefully, because uh, I, I used to pastor in a denomination, and I won't say which one, uh, for seven years I pastored there. But in order to get into that denomination, you had to go through, you know, college and, and seminary and all that to actually become a pastor. And um, when I got the word from, you know, the Holy Spirit to, you know, move that direction, I was in the Midwest and I had no money to get to the college. And uh, one of the things that this church, the whole church was totally taboo against completely, which I, it, I won't get into the wrong or right of it, but uh, was uh, playing the lottery was absolutely wrong. Well, I'm in this little town in the Midwest driving down the street and I'm just praying and asking Father, what, what should I be doing? How do I get to the, the seminary because I know, or the college because I know that's what you've said to do. Well, long story short, over and over and over, Holy Spirit, kept saying, go buy a lottery ticket. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I finally, I finally did. I, I just pulled into a gas station. I went in, I, I said, uh, give me a scratcher. I don't know. I don't even, and I really didn't. I had no idea how they worked. So he gives me a scratcher. I go out to the car, I scratch it off. I take it back in. I go, I don't know what this means. I won $500. <laughs> One shot. And that's uh, how I hey got Peter, to college. Hey, Peter, go down to, the, uh, <laughs> go down to yeah. the sea, cast in your line. The first fish you pull out is going to have a coin. Pay the taxes for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is funny how Holy Spirit will come against our prejudices or our belief systems sometimes oh. in order to get us where we need to be. The Holy Spirit Yikes. wrecks so many of my <laughs> well-devised, uh, you know, suspicions and beliefs. Just yeah. It's funny. Well, Dave, uh, uh, we're going to take a break real quick, but when we come back, what I, I want to really hear what's in your heart right now for the people as far as what's the message that you feel Father's given to you to give to the people uh, in this season. So we'll be back right after this. An ecclesia is family doing kingdom business. When you join an ecclesia with Kingdom Talks Media that is going through the Ultimate Impact series, this is what a typical week might look like. During the week, you'll watch the Ultimate Impact teaching videos based on that week's topic. Each video is about 10 minutes long, followed by a time for you to shift focus into the heavenly realm, allowing Father to guide you into further revelation. Once a week, you'll gather with your Ecclesia group in person or most likely through Zoom conferencing to typically do two things. One, 
relate with each other as you share insights about that week's topic. And two, shift focus into the heavenly realm as an ecclesia to practice engaging Father together. Week after week, you and your ecclesia will gain new perspectives through the teachings, discussions, and your experiences individually and together in the heavenly realms. <laughs> I want to, we were just talking behind the scenes there is that uh, promo was playing and uh, I want to hear the rest of that story at the, <laughs> at the rest, at the next uh, promo. Um, so Dave, what does father have on your heart right now? What's, you know, we all go through seasons where father just puts something on us and it's, and it's time for us to put that out there. What is it that he has on you right now for the people? Yep. Well, uh, after the election, um, I had a, some very troubling dreams and, um, unlike a lot of prophetic people, I didn't see, and the Lord never showed me, um, how the election would turn out. <clears throat> uh, what he did show me is that the outcome, and, and I can't say this is about the election, but what I will say is, uh, let's see, in October and November, the Lord be shifted my dreams and almost every dream he gave me was about the election. So I saw all this uh, revelation about specific things about the election, particularly in November. And in, in the midst of all these dreams that were clearly about the election, the Lord gave me this one dream where I saw a very, very long period of time uh, came to pass where everyone was waiting for something that they wanted to happen. So in the dream I knew, we all wanted the same thing. And we were all waiting for it to happen. And a lot of people gave up because it took so long for it to come to pass. Yeah. Right. Hmm. And at the, and we were just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And it seemed like forever. And right at the, right at the end of the dream, before I woke up, what we wanted happened in hmm. an instant. Boom. It, we, we got what we wanted. Now I don't know in that dream, I can't say hundred percent certain what it was that we wanted. Hmm. But that dream was in the setting of a whole bunch of other dreams, all of which were about the election. So I kind of inferred that dream was about the election and the fact that eventually regarding the election, we're going to get the outcome that we wanted. It's just going to take way more time than anyone wants. Okay. <clears throat> so the other dream that I had that was uh, troubling and that dream didn't trouble me. It actually encouraged me. Uh, in this dream, I was outside of a church wall. Um, I, I never have dreams where I'm inside of a church building. Hmm. Um, stopped having those kind of dreams a long time ago because the Lord basically has me ministering to people outside the walls of the church. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably 80% of the people who follow me <clears throat> on social media for the last 10 years are church dropouts. Um, they are people who have left the church because of uh, issues of abuse of power of manipulation and control or whatever. And um, they, they still love the Lord and they're following God, but they have um, problems with the institutional church. Let's put it right, that way. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I actually have some very good friends that I met a few years ago. Uh, one guy, he used to be an associate pastor of a church here in the Phoenix area. And he got, this church and was in this uh, on the staff and began to see all this control and manipulation going on and he put up with it for a while and eventually left um, so in this dream i was outside the church building but i was inside of a wall that was surrounded the church <laughs> still sort of on church property but not inside the building which is typical for the dreams that god gives me it's like you're connected to the church but you're mm -hmm. not in the building Right. So yeah. I was ministering to these people who were coming in and out of the church and they were all brokenhearted. They were weeping and sobbing and just they, they were in, in, unconsolable. And they were they, as they would come up to me, they would just look at me, put their head on my shoulder and just start crying. And I would just put my head on their shoulder and I would cry with them, <laughs> and let them cry on my shoulder and they would leave and somebody else would come up 
and they would put their head on my shoulder and start crying. And I, I could mm-hmm. sense in the dream their feelings. I could sense the anguish, the disappointment, the despair, and the brokenheartedness. Okay. And I was just doing, I, I wasn't even saying anything. I didn't know what to say to these people. I just let them cry on my shoulder. Wow. So again, that dream was in the setting of a, a whole bunch of other dreams over the course of about a month. All those dreams are about the election. Hmm. So again, I inferred that this dream was about the election. And I think what, what I took away from it was the fact that um, God was telling me that the, uh, the election was not going to turn out the way people wanted. And I had this dream before the election. Uh Late, late October, I think. Um, and, and I got very concerned when I had this dream because I felt it was about the election and I felt like it, the, the outcome was not going to turn out the way people wanted. And a lot of people are going to be brokenhearted and, and devastated. And, and that is, in fact, what we have dealt with for the last four months. Yeah. There's a lot of brokenhearted, devastated people. But what the Lord wants us to know is he has a plan his plan is still being worked out. It's not over. It's never over until you know, the, God has not had his final say. If you look at things in the natural, how they appear today, it's easy to be disappointed and discouraged because it looks like evil people are getting their way and they're in control. But God, uh, is, God wants us to know, number one, he, has, he still has a plan that is being worked out. Number two, um, he wants us to draw close to him in this time yeah. of despair and discouragement. His greatest desire is for us to draw closer to him so he can comfort us, so he can uh, wipe away the tears, so he can show us what is really happening behind the scenes and what is going to happen in the future. Um, the Lord has given me a lot of encouraging dreams about things that are coming when I take a nap in the afternoon, I almost always take a nap. Uh, Mm -hmm. I have a dream where it's hard to remember the details, but in every dream, I see good people behind the scenes staying one step ahead of the bad people. It's like every dream I have in the afternoon, it's always a a little scene that shows how the good guys are staying ahead of the bad guys, even though it doesn't look that way in in the natural. Yeah. So, you know, (laughs) what I'd like to encourage people with is, don't despair, don't give up hope, don't stop praying, and don't stop believing. Yeah. Because this country is going through uh, a, a crisis, but we're but believers are going through the dark night of the soul. Yeah. A lot of people are just they're just going through the dark night of the soul, and that is a time when God wants you to lean into him and let him be the comforter that he wants to be. You know, I remember when uh, the elections were taking place and I, I was looking at my phone realizing this doesn't look like it's going to go the direction that a lot of people, at least in our circles, have expected it to go. And immediately, Father just downloaded. He says, you're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, for me, that it, it, it was like an oh, duh moment in the sense that, you know, when you think about the image or the, um, you know, the, yeah, the image in Daniel chapter two and the, the rock that's cut without hands and strikes the image and totally obliterates every government form and system that has existed that now I, I totally believe there's got to be a transition has to be a transition, but at the same time, I don't think we're going to find it in our current world systems. Uh, and so I don't know if you've heard or, or been engaged with any of these groups around the world. There's there's a lot of different ones, small ones, big ones that are really looking, you know, to replace, you know, for a replacement system. But there's the ones I'm engaged with or, or working with, not working with, but just I know of, um, are the ones that are kind of, you know, going into the heavens to see what Father's doing and bringing that into the earth to start developing what they believe would be kingdom kingdom government, kingdom economics, kingdom education. Uh, do you have any thoughts in that area? Yep. Yeah, that's right. what it's about. Okay. That, that's what it's about. It's, it is about, um, I think what the Lord wants us to do is to partner with him in uh, allowing him to facilitate a lot, uh, through us the destruction of a corrupt system and several mm-hmm. corrupt systems education, entertainment, uh, the monetary system, 
our, our current system of government uh, and, and basically give up those systems. I mean, a lot of people are, are in despair because they're in love with the systems that they have right, right now. They want their right. and they want to yeah. keep their, you know, their, for, their 401k. They want to, they're kind of emotionally attached to. It's their security. The, the system. It is their security <laughs> in a lot of ways. But, yeah. but the Lord wants us to let go of those attachments and mm -hmm. let him give us his strategies for kingdom government, for kingdom finance, for kingdom entertainment. Um, he wants to radically change the corrupt systems that are in place right now. Now, do you have any insight as to what any of that might look like? Yes, I do. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So... You can't have any conversations with me without hearing about four or five of my dreams. It's just how it is. It's, it's all right. Real. All right. <laughs> Back in 2016, in August of 2016, before Trump was um, elected, the Lord gave me a, uh, a fascinating dream where, uh, and I'll just describe this briefly as I can. In the dream, people had to make a decision and they could either decide in favor of Trump or they could decide against Trump. And in the dream, I decided in favor of Trump and I was transported into another dimension. So hmm. I, it just, I was in another world, I was in another dimension. And I stepped into this world and I was walking around and there was no poverty. There was no sickness. There was no homelessness. There, there was everywhere <laughs> I went, there was lavish abundance. Hmm. Um, the, 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 I couldn't see any crime. I, yeah. it was, I was walking around talking to people like, where are the homeless people? Where are the shootings? <laughs> Where's all the chaos and mayhem? It was, it was the most incredible uh, place to be. And, and everyone had enough. Everyone's needs were met. Like I said, no sickness, no homelessness. It was like we were living in God's kingdom on earth. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And this, and that's kind of the, the, the content of the dream. Um, man, I have thought about that dream a lot over the last five years. And some recent words that I've heard and, and things that I've stumbled across um, have kind of connected some dots on the idea that the current world system, as we have known it for the last well, 6,000 years, or at least the last 200 years, <clears throat> mm -hmm. has already ended. And it ended yeah. a few years ago. And God is already instituting his kingdom system right now. And it may not look like it. And you may, people will look at the news <clears throat> and think, well, no, the new world order is in control and the globalists are going to, get the new green new deal and they're going to take all of our tax money and they're going to destroy us. And they're going to give us the mark of the beast and the vaccine and this and that. And it's easy to become tim uh, frightened when you see all this stuff going on. Mm -hmm. But if you, I believe from God's perspective, he has already initiated his, his kingdom plan to change all this stuff. And th there are, there are telltale signs of it out there. If you, if you know where to look. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're going to have a collapse of the financial system eventually. Uh, we're at 27 trillion in debt. There's no way that, that Joe Biden can add another, uh, this new package coming out with all of his omnibus bill and the infrastructure package is gonna be close to $5 trillion in debt. We're going to destroy the, the financial system. They're, they're, they, they intend to destroy the financial system. That, that's their goal. What they don't know is what is going to be on the other side of it. Right. I think God is going to institute a new financial system. And it's, I'm not talking about Nassara or Jassar or anything like that. Um, I, I mm -hmm. think that God is going, to inst is going to institute a new financial system on the other side of a, of a collapse. I started having dreams about economic collapse, stock market collapse back in 2010, 2011. Uh, where I saw the collapse happen, I saw what life was going to be like after the collapse. Um, and I think we're going to see some of those things come to pass sooner rather than later. I'm not going to give timelines. Yeah, but yeah. that's just one example. I think academia, I think healthcare, 
government, all these areas, the seven mountains, if you want to call them that. Right, right. These are, these are all areas where demonic principalities have been enthroned over these mountains and those principalities had been removed. And there is a, there's, there's probably a vacancy of, of those thrones right now. And God is going to, if he hasn't already, he's going to put his people on those uh, seats of power and he is going to establish his kingdom here. And I think that's, I think that's we're at the very, very beginning stage of that. So uh, I, I feel like, um, I, you know, I don't, I, I wish I knew, I, I need to read, you know, your, your books to understand better maybe where you're at, because uh, um, I get stuff thrown at me all the time. And, and uh, I think we've got a couple of your books, actually. But um, I'm thinking, or I've just come to a place where I believe things need to be taken care of first in the spiritual realm, and then we can manifest it in the physical. Yeah. And so taking those seats that you're talking about, those thrones at the top of those mountains, um, is something that, uh, uh, yeah, I do believe people are in process if they haven't already done taking it in the spirit. Well, I, I did write a book on um, defeating your adversary in the court of heaven. I saw that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm familiar with doing work in, in, in the, in the various courts and councils of heaven. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm hip to that. And, I, and it's absolutely critical for us to do that. Good. Now I, I kind of want to go back to something you said, you said that you believe it ended and that God's kingdom is being, has begun. Uh, you, but you believe that, uh, something shifted, uh, you know, a couple of years ago or a few years ago. What, what was it? Is there, was there, was there anything specific? Yes. That, okay. All right. So remember, uh, all the prophecies and all the astrological and astronomical phenomenon at the end of 2012, December, yes. 2012, the end of the yeah. mind calendar and all the other things. Right. There was like 60 or 70 different uh, phenomenon and they all sort of culminated at the end of December. And um, the Lord gave me some interesting dreams at that time in 2010 and 2011. And I had not really fully appreciated what that was about until recently when I've been hearing people talk and prophetic words that people have been given during 2012, I was like, Oh my gosh! I didn't, I didn't connect the dots. Um, I, I, all right, here's just one example: the, the Mayan calendar. So, the, so the Mayan calendar uh, uh, came to an end. It ended on December twenty first, two thousand twelve. Mm -hmm. And everyone's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, what was that? What's that about? A lot of people thought uh, the end of the world was coming. World. I don't think it was the end of the world. Obviously, we're still here. I think it was right. the end of an age. Okay, so did, so did the, the song end of like an the era? Did the song start it come into the, any of those dreams? You know, the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Yeah. That old song. Did that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's that's what people were talking about. They were talking about the age of Aquarius. Yeah. They were talking about ascension, and they were talking about right. all these other things. I mean, depending on you know whether you're into New Age spiritualism, Hindu, you know, whatever, you have yeah. different different ways of expressing that, but. The Lord gave me some specific revelation about that that event, uh, that time, and um, I suspect that these people did legitimately receive understanding about the ending of one thing and the beginning of something else. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Uh, I think that the Mayans understood, however they received the revelation, and I don't know how they received it, but I think that they understood that a, an, an epoch, an era of time was coming to an end and they couldn't see past that. And that's actually what a lot of people experience. In 2010, 2011, a lot of people were talking like something is going to end in 2012. We don't know what's past that, but some, this, what, the time we're living in, the period, this, this system, it's coming to an end and they couldn't see past so it, right? So yeah. we're now living in the time that they couldn't see past. And I think we're living in something that God started in 2012. And we're only beginning to see what that's going to look like. So I, I just have to share this because this is so exciting to me. Because what a lot of people don't know, you're talking about the shifting of the ages. What a lot of people don't know, but if it, it's, it's in science. You can look back and see that there was another shifting of the ages when Jesus was here. And... 
would if you if you use you know let's get outside of the astrology and just look at astronomy and and just understand that the sign for the age that Jesus came in was Aries and that the sign of that was the lamb the ram and and so what he took us into and shifted us into was the age of Pisces the fish which has been the sign of Christianity for the last 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. And now we're shifting into this place where a lot of people are calling it the mature sun. And it's a picture of a man with the water pot pouring back in. And, and, and what most many are interpreting that as the mature sun's pouring back into the earth. In other words, restoring kingdom, huh. bringing kingdom. Interesting. Here is, okay, so here's, here's another um, thing that you, you'll probably be able to resonate with. <clears throat> If you look at traditional Christian eschatology and, and theology, a lot of, um, especially if you come from uh, the view of eschatology of premillennial dispensationalism, right? So people kind of look at the dispensations of time. Right. And you can say, well, there was 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham, 2,000 years from Abraham to Christ, and 2,000 years from Christ to the no. kingdom age, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, yeah. a lot of people are expecting the rapture or the tribulation or the end of the earth eminently because it's been 2,000 years. And if you say, well, you know, you just march it out 2,000 years, then at the end of this 2,000 year period, something should happen. Yeah. I think something happened. <laughs> I, yeah. think, I, I think that people are not appreciating what actually happened. Well, here, here's another thing to look at. And again, we don't really know, but we can kind of hindsight helps a little speculate. bit. Plus we can speculate. Uh, but I believe that the the Aries uh, age ended when Christ was crucified because okay. he was the lamb. However, it took a few more years, 30, 40 years before uh, God said, in a, in a sense, enough is enough. And he destroyed the temple, which was still representing that old system. He destroyed you know, Jerusalem. And now I follow, you know, into this system. Now the the church has been prominent for the last two thousand years, uh, and you can look to say there's been an event. You could pick an event from the Bible that shows how each of these events were like. Um, that you know the the ages shift. Like Chris Carter talks about, they shift. You know, one door is closing while the other one is opening, right. and uh, it that time period could be one to three hundred years that shift, but. There has been events that we can look at and say, wow, it's like God said right there, boom, enough's enough, that's it. And it's like, what better sign to close out the church age than to have something that closed down every church worldwide for a season? <laughs> I was reading a commentary <laughs> from 538, uh, which is a political, it's um, basically po political pollster. Uh, I forget the name of the guy who runs a website, but I was fascinated this morning that he, he took a poll and wrote this article saying that church attendance in America is at an all time low, that that Americans have left the institutional church in the largest numbers in 100 years. Yeah. And I, I just read that and I was like, well, of course they have, because something just happened. And, you know, uh, Briefly, the, the Lord has has kind of just showed me over the last 10 years that the things that I'm looking for can't be found inside the institutional church, yeah. that uh, as much as the church can benefit people who, who attend regular church meetings, what the Lord showed me is that, um, that his kingdom is so much larger than the church institution. The church is just is another institution. And it's unfortunately come under the, the thumb of the government because most pastors are under 501c3 regulations and they refuse to talk about uh, politics because they don't want to lose their 501c3, right? And, I, and I'm an ordained minister and we have a ministry. I'm a 508c1a. We incorporated mm -hmm. as a 508 because we didn't want to be prohibited be restricted. from endorsing political candidates and talking about politics. Yeah, the church The, the church institution has... Uh, you know, I don't want to say run its course or, or, or it's not over, it's not done, but COVID uh, put a knife <laughs> in the back of the church. I mean, the fact that churches and church leadership acquiesced 
to the state and voluntarily yeah. close their doors and shut down. I mean, well, what, what happens when people aren't supporting the churches anymore? They're not giving, they're not coming in, they're not showing up. Well, you have a lot of people leaving the church institution who have not mm -hmm. left God. <laughs> just right, they're right. going to go on with their life and they're going to just like they're homeschooling. <laughs> well, now they're home home churching. Right. Uh, I, I think there's some in, really interesting dynamics going on that a lot of people, like I said, don't appreciate what has actually happened. Well, and I love what you said earlier that uh, uh, good or bad, I, I think it's good that most of the people that are involved in your ministry and what you're sharing and doing are people who have left the church. And we've, we're the same thing. In fact, um, I would say a lot of people have told us that we've ruined their prayer ministry or not their prayer ministry, but they're, they don't know how to pray anymore because, you know, once you leave the religious system and realize, no, this communication that we're talking about is is a two-way street and it's happening all the time it's not something that uh you you know you just give him your prayer list and and hope he answers a few of them but rather it's a it's an intimate relationship and so we're we're just you know there to help people transition from yeah. what we yeah. believe is the church age into an intimate relationship with the lord where they get to have communication they don't have a third party of pastor or somebody telling them what they should believe I occasionally have people um, whine uh, <laughs> when I do my broadcasts because I don't lead people in prayer. Um, I look at yeah. prayer <clears throat> as relationship and communication with God. My my prayer with God is just it's a con it's a constant ongoing communication. You know, when I'm writing a book, I sit down and I dictate the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Holy Spirit just starts talking. Yeah. And I'm listening yeah. and I'm like, okay, I'm writing as fast as I can, right? That my prayer time is just simply, it's, I don't have prayer time. It's like, would you have prayer time with your wife? Right, like, right. All right, you need to set aside, you know, 10 minutes a day and pray because you, or communicate with your wife, because if you don't have that time with your wife, you know, you, you're going to get kind of off track. So make sure you set aside 10 minutes a day devotion to spend with your wife. I have a constant relationship with my wife all the time. We talk all the time. We, we're, we're always communicating exactly. and we're always you know, doing stuff. And that is how our relationship with God is not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, a, a formal process where I have to learn how to pray correctly and say the right things, right words. That's not prayer. That's, yeah. that's religion. <laughs> that is traditions. God wants an intimate relationship. So I don't lead people in prayer because that's like, like I'm going to tell you what you should t tell to God. Like, right. no, I'm not going to tell you what you should tell God. Tell him, speak to him like you would your wife or your husband or anybody else. Um, be open, be honest, be transparent. Mm -hmm. and, and both ways, when he speaks to you, be willing to hear what he says. Absolutely. You know, we we hold a, a Sunday morning gathering just because our, our we feel like our mission is to uh, help people, you know, cross over from the church into, you know, personal relationship. But we don't do worship music. We have meditative music and we actually engage. We'll spend 30, 45 minutes and just encouraging everybody, share what you're getting. And it is so beautiful to see how wow. Father will That's create cool. a story and bring a message. He will bring the message, but he brings it through the people. And that's, I just, I love it. It's just amazing what Father does. Yeah. So we got about 10 minutes left. What are some of the things that you would say, or um, how can people engage with you? What do you say to people when they want to connect with you? All right. Well, <clears throat> I, uh, I used to have a big following on YouTube uh, <laughs> until I started uh, getting a little too much over the target. Uh, talking about Q and institutional corruption in the deep state. So they took my YouTube channel down. Used to have a Facebook page. Uh, I've had four Facebook pages. They've all been deleted by Facebook. Wow. Uh, wow. I used to have a big Twitter account. And <clears throat> during the election, uh, my Twitter page was getting 10 million impressions a day. Holy uh, cow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, and I, when the day that General Flynn and Sidney Powell got their Twitter pages suspended, I got suspended. They took down 10 million Good company. Think, uh, Twitter accounts at that time. So I'm not on any of the major social media platforms. Wow. Um, okay. So 
I am on Gab and I have a verified account on Gab. So if you just go to Gab, uh, my handle is at praying-medic. Uh, I'm pretty active on Gab. Um, I just started a Telegram channel. Uh, my friends have been bugging me forever to start a Telegram channel. And after two fake praying medic Telegram channels started up last week, I thought, okay, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start my own channel. Yeah. So I'm on Telegram and I, I have uh, a Telegram channel there. I got like, I think there's 20,000 subscribers on it right now, which it's only been open for four days and we've already got a lot of subscribers. Wow. So I'm, I'm posting pretty regularly on Telegram, news, current events, dreams, prophetic information, encouraging things, memes, wh whatever comes to mind. Uh, if you followed my Twitter account, uh, you'll see the same kind of thing in my Telegram channel. Uh, okay. I am on CloudHub. CloudHub is a kind of a newer social media platform. I'm live streaming on CloudHub uh, once a month, the second Saturday of the month. I do a show called, it's a live stream called Supernatural Saturday. And, and on Supernatural Saturdays, um, I do a live stream and I talk about some subject uh, that is kingdom related. Could be dreams, might be healing, emotional healing, physical healing. Right now, I've been going through the book, Hearing God's Voice Made Simple, chapter by chapter, going through that. <clears throat> and that uh, people can join the live stream. Uh, it's on my website and it's also on CloudHub. On my website, prayingmedic.com. Uh, I have a bunch of modules on there. So there's one module that has articles, another one for videos. There's another one for my books. There's another one for the podcast. There's another one. But you just got to click on the module. If you're interested in my classes, there's a module for the classes. I'm going to be putting out a couple more classes here pretty soon, including a class on online class on self-publishing. I'm going to put oh, out really? a, a, an online masterclass in self-publishing. In case okay. you're interested, uh, yeah. that's premedic.com. Yeah. If you want to support us financially, I have another website called prayingmedic.org, and that's our ministry website. Okay. Uh, on that website, uh, I post the videos. The Supernatural Saturday videos are on there. There's some articles, um, book links, podcasts, and uh, you can support us there. There's a donate page there on prayingmedic.org. And let me see. And, and I just joined Pilled.net and Foxhole. So for those of you who are interested in Q, <laughs> a lot of the Anons who got booted off of uh, YouTube, uh, the Q researchers have uh, basically put together their own YouTube-like alternative called Pilled.net. And it is a place where content providers are doing, they're doing live streaming and they're uploading their own videos to pilled.net. And then there's another, there's an app, a mobile app called <clears throat> Foxhole, where if you install a Foxhole app, it has a lineup of all of the broadcasters and you can view their live streams and the times that they're going live on the Foxhole uh, app. That has become kind of a bunker for a lot of the researchers and anons who got booted off of Twitter, Facebook, and <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> So I'm kind wow. of branching out a little bit and I, I will eventually get back into doing live streams. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as I get some of these books finished up and out there, I'll probably go back to doing live streams. But uh, I, I've just been taking advantage of the time and, and doing a lot of writing. Yeah, well, th that's a lot. And um, uh, the I think you're saying pilled.net as in uh, the red pill, right? The red pill and the blue pill. Instead of likes and dislikes on the videos, you give a red pill or a blue pill. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. That's cool. All right. Well, uh, uh, anything else? About five minutes. Uh, not a whole lot other than I just, you know, again, I'd like to encourage people not to give up hope. It's really yeah. easy yeah. to look at, you know, the headlines and look at the propaganda that the mainstream media is putting out now. Oh, my gosh. It's, and they're in panic mode. And just yeah. realize one thing, <clears throat> if nothing else, if you don't take anything else away from this, realize one thing. Uh, there is an, uh, an election audit going on in the county that I happen to live in called Maricopa County, Arizona. Uh, and that audit is probably going to bring to light 
evidence of widespread election fraud. And when it does, things are going to change because if the Senate, if our state Senate uncovers evidence of election fraud enough to overturn the results of the November election, that creates a huge problem. Basically means we need to redo our election, presidential election, which would also potentially affect the Senate and House seats and, uh, and other races. But if Arizona finds evidence of election fraud, particularly if they find evidence of fraud in the Dominion voting machine systems, that is probably going to cause other states to look at their, their elections. Probably gonna be other audits. If you have five or six or seven states who all decide they're gonna do audits and they all find election fraud, well, what do you do? Do you redo the election? and you maybe don't use the Dominion voting machines. This is what we're kind of getting into right now. This is the, yeah. the stage that we're getting into. And, and the mainstream media has been in lockstep denial about election fraud. And all of the rhetoric and all of the hysteria about the January 6th insurrection is all a cover. They want to divert attention away from the election fraud they want us all looking at the insurrection, <clears throat> uh, the peaceful protest on January 6th. But they're not going to stop the audit. The, the results are going to come out. It's going to take about three weeks for them to finish the audit. And uh, we're moving in the right direction. We are moving the football in the right direction. The media is kind of in panic. DC is in panic because they're terrified of people finding out the truth about the election. So. Uh, it, it's easy to get discouraged, but but I would just encourage you keep in prayer, and yeah. <laughs> uh, and don't give up hope. Th things are are going to get better. We're just in the dark night of the soul, and we're we're walking. We're going to be out of this tunnel here pretty soon. That's so good. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, you know, one of the things I think that's also happening possibly is that we're in the harvest time. It's not what we thought it was, but the harvest in the harvest time, everything grows and becomes ripe to where you can tell what the wheat, that the wheat is the wheat and the tares are the tares. <laughs> and I think yep. we're in that time that we're seeing a very clear distinction. And yep. um, I'm also just believing that enough people are going to be tired of all the fighting that we're going to just say enough is enough. We need to, we need something different. We need something fresh and new. And uh, hopefully, Father, I believe, is going to be downloading what that new is, and we'll have something in place soon. Amen. So, Thank you again, Dave. It's been a pleasure. Um, and if you have some time, uh, we'll do a behind-the-scenes section. Do you have a few more minutes? Heck yeah. All right. So if you're watching and want to see the behind the scenes, go to KingdomTalksMedia.com and uh, look through the menu section. There's a place where you can go to behind the scenes. Click on that. And that'll take you through the process. And look forward to seeing you all there. And again, honor you and thank you, Dave, for what you're doing. Appreciate you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out to listen to Kingdom Talks. You can find out more about Kingdom Talks Media and our mission to unite in faith and grow as mature sons at KingdomTalksMedia.com. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, Fringe Radio Network, and many more places. Go to our website to find links to all of our media outlets, as well as fantastic online courses and conferences including the life-changing interactive course, Ultimate Impact. And last but not least, we ask that you consider partnering with us to fulfill the mission to get these messages to the world. To become a partner, go to the Partnership tab on our website. Thank you, and until next time, live a blessed life and keep carrying us in your heart and sharing us wherever hearts are open.